Hi, welcome to the class. This is the first part of the video editing series. If you have never touched any video editing software before, I think this will be beneficial to you. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to compile multiple different footages into one video clip and upload them through YouTube, Facebook or social media. I think a lot of us actually miss traveling. So in this video, I'm going to create a mock traveling advertisement for one of my favorite places in the world, which is Venice. All the footages that I've used in this video were actually downloaded from video blogs, which is my favorite website for stock footages. And I'm also using uh, my favorite song that I've gotten from Artlist. Hi, welcome to the lesson. And in this lesson, I'm going to go through the fundamentals of video editing on Adobe Premiere. And the reason why I'm using Adobe Premiere because it's the current industry standards for video editing software. I'll be using Adobe Premiere CC 2019 in this video, but I do believe the fundamental concept is actually applicable to other versions or even other softwares. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to compile multiple footages into one complete video clip and optimize it for online delivery like YouTube, Facebook, and other social media. So before we start launching the Adobe Premiere, I need you to create a folder uh, and all the sources that you're going to use on this particular exercise need to be copied into this folder and the reason why this is important is actually the fact that Adobe Premiere is just a simply it's a link based software whereby it doesn't actually save all the source files within the project file itself it simply triggers a link to the source files so I have created a folder on my desktop and within the folder I have this folder which contains all the sources that I'll be using in this particular lesson. So as you can see inside the footages folder, I have copied all the footages that I'll be using in this uh, lesson. And I have uh, copied the song that I'll be using for the lesson as well. Footages on these lessons are actually downloaded from video blogs, which is actually my uh, preferred uh, video uh, footages website whereby you can actually download stock footages from it and the song that I'll be using on this particular lesson is actually downloaded from Artlist. So once you have created the folder, let's launch Adobe Premiere. On Adobe Premiere, the first thing that we need to do is actually to create, to actually click on new project button and let's just name this travel video 01 and of course you can name it whatever you like as long as you can remember it uh, and click on browse and basically define the locations of the file that you are going to save the project at and in this case i have put it on my desktop under creative coach folder under 01 video edit and we need to make sure that all the project files and uh, sources are actually being saved into the same folder uh, because when you move the folder around uh, Premiere will actually have uh, problems in finding the link files so and of course it will actually create a broken link so once you have selected a folder click on the select folder button and let's just click OK And here's the basic uh, workspace for Premiere. If, yours, if your layout looks different from mine, uh, it's pretty much fine because we can actually customize the positions of these uh, different windows. But for this lesson, I will not go through this different window one by one because I don't think you will need it at this point of time. But I just want you to understand three different windows that is important for any basic video editing, which is the timeline, the project window, and also the uh, reference window. So these are the three windows that are important at this point of stage. 
And the next thing that I need you to do is actually to click on File, New, and Sequence. Okay. And of course, there are a lot of different templates to use, but for now, I just want you to click on Settings. And one thing that is important in video editing is the fact that before you start any projects, you need to know what kind of output that you will uh, render your video to. So in this case, I mentioned that we are going to create an online video that is going to be broadcasted through YouTube. So uh, click on settings and under editing mode, click on the rollout button and you can find custom. So we'll be doing a custom uh, editing mode in this case. Um, under the time base, you can I'll be choosing 25 frames per second because this is a typical editing standards that being used in Asia. But of course, there are a lot of different options that you can use. Uh, if you are based in US, probably you can use 29.97. But for now, just keep it as 25 frames per second. And next thing, I'll be rendering out this video as a HD video. So the default size of HD video is actually 1920 by 1080. And at this point of time, uh, you don't actually need to remember the size because uh, you can easily Google it next time if you've forgotten about it. You just need to simply search HD video size and you should be able to find the size. And you just need to, uh, at this point of time, let's just use the basic, uh, let's just use the uh, default options. So I just need you to check if this is actually square pixels and the sample rate to be 48,000 hertz. Once you have uh, checked all this, you can just click on OK. And now this is the new sequence that we are going to work on. So the first thing that we need to do, uh, so the next thing that we need to do is actually to import all our source file and in this video, I am going to go through uh, a basic editing tools, which is actually the fundamentals on for any types of uh, video editing, which is actually a soundtrack based edit. Uh, so at this point of time, let's import the soundtrack to our project. Uh, on your travel, sorry, on your project window, which is this window here, you can double click on the empty portions of the project window. This will actually serve as your project library. So all the footages, all the sources that you use for this particular project will actually be imported to this window. So double click on this and it will bring you to the folder. Uh, let's found our soundtrack and I can find the, sound, uh, the soundtrack inside the sound folder. Double click. And now you can see that this uh, soundtrack is actually being imported to the project library. Once you have this, let's click and drag it and drop it to your timeline. So now you can see uh, the timeline is actually being divided into video tracks and audio track. Since this is a soundtrack, which is the music, I will actually put this on our audio track. So by pressing the space bar, you can actually listen to the soundtrack. And if you look at the, so if you look at, at this bar here, this actually will define the levels of the audio. And you can see just now the level is actually pretty high. Uh, if I were to increase the level further, you can see that it turns, red color, which is uh, something that is bad for the audio, which is, uh, this is actually called uh, clipping. Sorry, this is actually called peaking, which is going to clip uh, some information on the audio and you will see some noise later on. So uh, I always make it a habit that we will always start our audio level at minus 12. This is actually a typical uh, standard of a broadcast in the past, whereby when you, whenever you are submitting any types of broadcast, be it a TV commercials or a, a TV program, you should always render your audio as a minus 12. Uh, and, but for digital output like what we are doing now, this will just simply give you a, 
this will actually give you a, a bit of a headroom on the audio so that you can actually if you need to overlay more audio later you can easily overlay it okay so first thing first import the audio so let me recap this quickly import the audio to project library drag it to your timeline adjust the level so the next thing that i'm going to do is actually to import all the footages into the project library again you just need to double click on your project library at the empty spot here and find the footages that you want to import and for now i will just import all the footages into the project library so just simply click and drag uh, and this kind of uh, motion actually called lassoing in a uh, in a video productions kind of uh, language we call this lassoing so we just need to lasso all the uh, footages and click on open and now you can see that all the uh, footages are being imported into our project library and the next thing is uh, i want to be able to preview the footage uh, i want to see the thumbnails of the footages so that i can i can tell what is the content of the footage so you can actually click at this button at the bottom which says icon view so let me do this one more time at the bottom you should be able to find this icon view and click it and now you can see the thumbnails of each of the footages that you have imported in so as per the introductions i'm going to create a travel video uh, with this and i'm going to create a travel video of one of my favorite places in the world which is venice so i've imported uh, a different footages of venice here and in any forms of a storytelling it's always good to define the location uh, in this case i define the settings um, so we will start by putting an establishing shots of the location so if i remember correctly i should be able to find a, a aerial shots of these uh, i think it's this one here so once you have decided on the footage that you want to use you just need to double click and once you've double clicked the footage it will actually bring you to a new project window uh, sorry i mean to a new window called the source window this will actually show you a preview of the footage that you are going to use so the next thing that we need to do is actually to decide which part of the footage that we are going to use for our edits so i can just uh, click on this slider at the bottom and just simply drag around and this process actually called scrubbing so i just need to look through the footage and basically decide which part i want to use for my edits so in this case i am going to use uh, let's say i'll be using this part once you've decided on the part click on the uh, this button called mark in to decide on the beginning of the clip and you can scrub further and click on this button called mark out to decide on the end of the clip that you want to use so by doing so uh, the part of the clip that you're going to use will be just simply the part that you have chosen and once you have decided you can just click and hold on this and drag it to your timeline and let me undo this and let me do this one more time click, click and hold and drag it to your timeline and if you made a mistake you can always press ctrl z on a pc or command z on a mac so now you can see the footage is actually being imported to your timeline and when you press spacebar you can preview it and it will be playing back together with the song that you have placed earlier so the next thing i'm gonna do uh, now i i need to see the footage more uh, in order for me to make a cut later on so uh, you can click on the edge of this particular slider click and drag it back 
And now you can see more detail. Basically, you are zooming in into your timeline so that you can see more detail. So just not mention that we are going to do a soundtrack based edit. So this is what I meant. We'll be using the beat of the music as a guide for our cut. So an example, let's say, I think based on the music is actually being, uh, it's actually based on the four, four bars types of chord progressions. So I believe you can easily tell the part whereby it actually goes to the next uh, bar. So we just play back the song for a while and to see which bar actually uh, stop and actually goes into the next bar. So this is what I mean. You just need to simply follow the beat of the song. So now you can see the part where I stopped the song just now was actually the stop of the beat, right? So uh, since this is the first, uh, the first uh, shot, I will just make this a little bit longer as an introduction. So I will put, I will put uh, two bars instead of just one bar. So let me just play back one more time. And I'm going to stop it there. So now I need to extend the footage. You can extend or reduce the footage length by simply putting your cursor at the end of the footage here. So now you can see the, the cursor changes uh, icon and click and hold it and drag it down. And now you can see the footage gets longer. So we have our first footage. Now I'm going to import my second footage. So I am going to get another aerial view of the knees. Uh, maybe I'll be using this one. And same thing, double click. And choose the part that you want to use. Mark in. And choose the endpoint of the footage and mark out. So the process, uh, I'm going to repeat this process uh, a few times uh, for different footages. So basically the process is the same. You just need to simply decide on the footage that you want to use. Mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline and cut it further. So mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline. And again, I will listen to the song again and follow the beat. So this time I'm going to choose this particular bit to end this footage. So same thing, click and hold it and drag it down. So that is basically the fundamentals of any types of video editing. Uh, choose a footage, choose a relev relevant portions of the footage that you want to use, put it into the timeline, cut it accordingly. So I am going to continue and choose another footage. And this time, I know I have a nice uh, aerial view that is a, a bit closer, which is, I think, is this one here. So I'll be using this portion. So the same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline, uh, listen to the song, and extend the footage accordingly. So let me just zoom in to the timeline further so I can see it better. Maybe let me just extend this a little bit. So now the next thing that I'm going to do, of course, I will continue to do this. I will continue importing uh, different footages into the timeline. And now I am going to use uh, this footage of the kennel, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, just uh, give a, a bit of a feel of the location. So same method, uh, mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline and play back. And drag it down accordingly. 
And next thing is I'm going to start introducing to like our hero image, which is actually the gondola. So I think I have this footage here. And now you can see like the bit of the song starting to feel a little bit more faster, although the beat is actually the same, but it, uh, it has a little bit more impact now. So I'm going to cut it faster. So I'm going to use this footage first. So same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline and play back. So I'm going to uh, cut it into half. So now you can see like the timing goes into half. And I'm going to continue adding footages on this. Uh, I think I'll be using this, which is the white shot of uh, the gondola guy. Same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline, press spacebar, cut it accordingly, and of course, let's bring to let's bring the next footage. And the next thing that I need to do is uh, I'm going to import another footage. Of course, uh, I think I'll be using this. And same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it down, drag it down, and preview. And next thing, I'm going to introduce our so-called main character, which is this lady here. So I'll be using this. Same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it to your footage, sorry, drag it to your timeline and simply play back. Uh, and I'll be putting in another footage of her which is this one here. Mark in, mark out, drag it to your timeline. So now you can see the process is pretty much the same throughout whereby uh, you just need to choose the particular portions of the footage that you want to use, drag it to your timeline and cut it accordingly. And if I remember correctly, I actually have a footage of uh, the gondola passing through a tunnel. So I'll be adding that footage now. I think it's this one. Uh, and I will scrub through all the way till I find the parts whereby the gondola actually uh, passing through the tunnel. I think it's, yeah, it's somewhere here. Mark in, mark out, drag it down. And play back. And now I'm going to add another white shot of the canal. I think it's this one here. Same thing, mark in, mark out, and play back. So now you can see like how the song actually changes. So I'm going to drag this all the way down so that it actually stops just before the next beat hits. Something like that. So lastly, I'm going to put in uh, another aerial shot. This will be actually the end of the video. Uh, I think I have this. So now you can imagine this can be like the end of our video whereby uh, we can start putting text on it, like maybe uh, welcome to Venice or something, or visit Venice or whatsoever. So just uh, same thing, mark in, mark out, drag it down, play back. And I'm going to stop it there. So. These are all the footages that I'm going to use. Uh, just, of course, we can do longer videos. Uh, you can do longer videos if you like to, but I think these are good enough for me to showcase uh, uh, basic fundamentals of video editing. And also importantly, 
This is actually based on the soundtrack based edit whereby you're actually following the beat of a song to cut your video. So now what I'm going to do next is of course I will cut this a little bit further and now you can see that actually the, the song is much longer that, than we actually need. So I'm going to cut the song. So I'm going to introduce you to one tool uh, which is the razor tool. You can actually find it on the left side of your timeline. Uh, this is something called Razor Tool, which is the toolbar here, and click it. And this toolbar sometimes actually uh, positions somewhere else, but you just need to find this particular icons, and just need to click it. And I will click on the part of the song whereby I want to cut it. So in this case, I'm going to cut it somewhere here. And once you have clicked it, now you can see the song is actually being cut into two, being actually split into two. And now click on the selection tool, which is the arrow button, and click on the part of the song that you don't want. And hit the delete button on your keyboard. Okay, let me repeat this one more time. So on the left side, on the toolbar, you can click on the razor tool, click on the part that you want to cut, click on the selection tool, and click on the part that you want to delete, and hit the delete button on your keyboard. And so there you go. When we play back, And you can see that the song actually stops there. Uh, but no, now of course we have another problem. The problem is the fact that the song is actually being cut like really ab abruptly, which of course doesn't sound good. So what I'm going to do next is actually to make the song slowly fade down, slowly fade out. So in order for you to do that, you just need to click on the audio track here. And on the left toolbar, click on this small button here, this triangle button, and you can find effects control. And once you click on the effects control, you should be able to see the audio options here. And if you can't find this effects control uh, window, you can go to window and effects control. Sometimes the layout of your workspace will be different to mine. You can actually customize this, but it doesn't actually matter because you can always bring out the windows that you need from the window uh, button on the top toolbar. So now as uh, you can see here, it's actually the level of this actually minus 12. So in order for me to make it uh, fade out, I need to make the the level of the audio gradually to be lower. So what I need to do is actually to click on this uh, stopwatch button. Once you click on the stopwatch button, or you can click on this button, add or remove keyframe, it will actually re-add a keyframe on your timeline. And this basically define the audio properties at this particular timing on your timeline. So now at this point, uh, the audio level is actually minus 12. So I'll, I'll be dragging this down all the way to the end of the footage. And I will reduce this level by click and drag it down all the way to minus 287.5, which is actually uh, minus, uh, basically all the way down so that uh, it becomes a silent. So now if I play back, You can hear that the audio is gradually goes down and uh, getting softer and softer. So this is actually what we wanted. So now uh, basically the editing is completed. So the next thing that we need to do is of course to go back to the beginning of the uh, edits and we just need to press spacebar to preview our edits so far. And I think it's a good time for me to save and uh, you should actually save uh, your project uh, throughout the entire process uh, 
bit by bit. So just go to file and save. And now let's preview by hitting spacebar button. So there you have it. So once you've previewed, once you have previewed uh, your edits, you can still make adjustment further. So in this case, let's say, uh, now I find this uh, two footages are actually a bit abrupt. So because the fact that if I play back, uh, the directions of the footage is actually uh, an opposite direction, which sometimes it actually gives a, a, a break of a feel. Uh, in between of the, the, the clip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap the beginning and the end. So I'm going to swap this to the last footage that we use. So I can just simply click and, click and hold and drag this footage down all the way. So I just basically put this footage aside for now and click and drag this down and put it in positions and just simply adjust it accordingly. And now we can see I have swapped the footage. For the last footage, I'm going to drag it back and cut it accordingly. And let's preview it one more time. So if you, so at this point, uh, the, the video is wasn't actually being played back at the correct speed because the fact that hey, we haven't rendered this video just yet and you can see this red bar that means the video is not rendered just yet so in order for you to render it as a preview you can just press enter and it will actually save the information to your computer ram and once you have rendered it You should be able to play back on the actual speed of the video and of course now you can see the rendering process is very fast is the fact that we haven't put any forms of effects or transition in it but once you put effects then uh, it will be much longer than this so now you can see the red bar here turns into green which means the video has already been rendered and whatever you see during the preview just now will be the actual uh, look of the video so uh, I think that is basically all that we need to do for the video editing today. And I hope this will help you to understand the basic of a video editing. And uh, as uh, you can see, you can compile multiple different footages into one video clip. So the next thing that we are going to do is actually to export this video uh, into a playable format that can actually be playback and uploaded through our social media. So make sure your timeline uh, window has been selected and go to file on the top toolbar and click on export and media so let me repeat this one more time file sorry file export media and let's choose the format here Okay, once you click on export, of course, this export setting window will appear. So the next thing that we need to do is actually to choose on the file format that we want. So in this case, since I mentioned that we are going to upload it through uh, social media, YouTube, whatsoever, the standard of this is actually a H.264. So just click on this uh, rollout button and you can see H.264 which is actually an mp4 format click it and so now this will be the 
uh, format that we are going to export to. And the next thing, you just need to put it into default at this point of time. And the output name, let's click on this output name and name the file accordingly. So let's just put this as a travel video version one and just click on save. So this is how I actually normally save the file. So travel video first in one, if I have make some changes, or of course, if I do a client's projects and the client asks me to do a change, uh, I will put it as travel video to version two, version three, and so on and so forth. So I will put as travel video version one for now and click on save. And now drag down further and make sure that you check under this render maximum depth. And of course, this will actually something uh, in order for you to keep, to maintain the quality of the video and drag down further. And you can find this target bit rate. Uh, this is basically define the size of the video. And of course, the higher the size, uh, the, uh, the, the higher quality will be. But in most cases, it, when we are working on HD video, I think 18, or 20 will be sufficient. So I will just put as 18 for now. So basically it will actually uh, play back the video as 18 megabit per second. So, and make sure this use maximum render quality is clicked. So once you have set all those, you just need to click on the export button. And now the software is actually rendering the video out as a playable file. So if you were to add a lot of different effects, a lot of text, a lot of uh, transitions, uh, audio adjustment or whatsoever, this will actually add on to the rendering time greatly. So now you can see this particular render that we are doing here is actually uh, takes uh, just a couple of seconds to do. But once when you add a lot more things, then it can be minutes, hours, and so on and so forth. And before you actually render the video, I would like to advise you to actually save the video, save the project file one more time because there'll be chances whereby uh, the software will actually crash. And of course, if you haven't saved it, then there'll be chances whereby you need to redo certain part of the edits that you need to do. So once the render has been completed, it will automatically turn the windows off and now you should be able to you should be able to find your final video in the folder in your project folder just now so now you can see the project uh, the the final output video is actually big safe here So there you go. That is basically the basic uh, video editings, uh, basically the fundamentals of video editings. And I think this is the, the most efficient way to do video edits whereby you actually using the soundtrack to guide your edit. And after you do this, I know I didn't highlight much on how I decide on where to cut, but uh, along the way, when you do more edits, you will be able to uh, understand it better. So I think this is uh, this should be sufficient for you to start your editing journey. 
So, uh, so of course, this is just the basic. Basically, we just simply compile all the footages into one video clip. The next thing that we need to do is actually to do uh, color gradings, and that will actually help the video uh, to look more uniform, and of course, to make the video look more professional or complete. So I'm going to do color grading on my next lesson. And with that, that is all for today. And I hope this video is useful. And thank you so much for watching. So I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have more questions regarding video editing, you can email me at this link below. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.